Hey everyone, today on People Now, filmmaker Ava DuVernay opens up about how watching that George Floyd video brought her to her knees. Bachelor fans start a petition for the series to cast a black lead and call for anti-racism efforts. Unfortunately, you know, I've had to have this conversation earlier uh, with my kid. American Ninja Warrior host Akbar Bajabia Mila shares a powerful story about his kids facing racial profiling. Joe McHale tells us what he really thinks about Tiger King and the future of Starman on the series Stargirl. Oh my gosh, this is a big moment. I'm excited. I oh do my not goodness. Me anymore. <laughs> Doctors Ben and Aaron Schrader introduced their new co star for this season of Heartland Docs DVM. That and so much more today on People Now. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to People Now. I'm Andrea Belke. Hope you're having a good Tuesday so far. Jeremy, how's it going? Good. It's good to be back after having yesterday off. How'd it go yesterday? It went better than usual, actually. <laughs> yeah. A lot more relaxing, not yeah, stressful right. at all. No, we, we missed you, Jeremy. So really well, yeah, I, I, on the other hand, did miss you and did miss being here. Um, it's good to see you, though. There is a lot to get to today. Here's what you need to know and what's trending for your Tuesday. We begin with Ava DuVernay opening up about her heartbreaking reaction to George Floyd's death. In an interview on Monday's episode of Ellen, an emotional DuVernay admits feeling desensitized to most footage of police brutality due to watching so much of it while making her films over the years. But even still, she says watching George Floyd's video, in her words, brought her to her knees. Watch. It was because we actually um, watched both parties' faces perfectly framed. It wasn't a body cam footage where you saw the black person be shot and you did not see the officer. It wasn't grainy footage from a security camera across the street. It was both men um, right in your face, right to the lens, one begging for his life and one taking his life. And I think the, the startling nature of that for me is it showed me, and when you ask what I'm been think, I've been thinking about, it made me realize that we have let police officers who abuse off the hook by allowing, allowing them to recede into society and kind of disappear. Duvernay went on to address the big distinction. We remember the names of the victims of police brutality like Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, and Mike Brown, but not all of us know who killed them. She explained why this is so important. Take a look. This invisibility allows us to tell a story that is incomplete. And so for me, that's a lot of what I've been thinking about in this moment, how we've allowed this sense of police invisibility which leads to a lack of accountability, which is just one of many issues within our current criminal justice system that needs to be dismantled. The final memorial service for George Floyd is underway in Houston, Texas right now. Floyd will be buried at the Houston Memorial Gardens in Pearland, Texas, later on Tuesday, right next to his mother. Bachelor Nation is demanding change, with fans urging the series to cast a black lead for its 25th season. After 18 years on the air, the entire franchise has only ever cast one black lead, 2017's Bachelorette Rachel Lindsay. It changed that on Monday, fans launched an anti-racism campaign, an online petition, calling producers to make adjustments to the show's production. As of Tuesday morning, the petition received over 47,000 signatures. Now that petition features 13 calls to action in total. Besides calling for a black lead, it urges producers to make sure that black, indigenous, and other people of color make up at least 35% of contestants and that producers give them equitable screen time. The campaign also calls on the show to actively support those contestants by offering mental health resources, hiring a diversity consultant, condemning racism, and paying attention to stereotypes. And they ask that all new contestants be vetted to prevent those with, quote, promoted prejudice. The petition's final call is for the show to issue a public statement apologizing for enabling systemic racism within the franchise and offer a clear plan for its anti-racism efforts moving forward. Reps for ABC have not yet responded to people's requests for comments. Several alums from the franchise, like Tyler Cameron, Nick Vile, and Lauren Burnham, have shown their support by sharing the petition on their social media. Rachel Lindsay shared it as well. In a recent interview with AfterBuzz, Rachel Lindsay said that she would not want to continue with the franchise if changes weren't made, and that she's embarrassed to be part of a community with very few faces of color. She later added, if I could change one thing, it's the show doesn't reflect the real world. Another Vanderpump Rules cast member is speaking out. This time, Brittany Cartwright is addressing allegations made by her former co-star, Faith Stowers. Fans will remember that Stowers was at the center of a love triangle when Jax Taylor cheated on his now wife, Cartwright, with Stowers. 
During a recent Instagram Live with Floribama Shore star Candace Renee Rice, Sauer said in the wake of that cheating scandal, she felt like the cast, quote, wanted to attack me instead of him, adding, it was like they wanted to attack, 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 calling me names, saying my hair was nappy, which is weird coming out of their mouths. On Tuesday, Cartwright replied to a comment on Instagram that asked her to address the, quote, racism regarding Faith Sowers, calling her nappy, as well as complicit support of the cops being called on her. Comments have now been turned off on that post, but not before Cartwright replied in part. She said, quote, I had nothing to do with that. She knows I don't have a racist bone in my body. She hurt me really bad and never once apologized. Cartwright claims she hasn't spoken to Sauer since finding out about the cheating and continued in part, I did not say anything about nappy hair. I had nothing to do with any cops. She knows that I have never once spoken publicly about her. Cartwright's fellow Vanderpump cast members, Stassi Schroeder and Kristen Doty, broke their silence earlier this week, issuing apologies after Stowers recalled the time when they spotted a tabloid article about a black woman wanted for theft and called the police to falsely pin the crimes on her. So, you know Akbar Baja Biamila as one of the hosts of NBC's American Ninja Warrior. He's also a black man living in America. And when I caught up with him and his co-host, Matt Eisman, we had a real conversation about race in the aftermath of George Floyd's death and the protests that followed. Akbar gave us his unfiltered views on America today and what needs to change. Watch. Well, I will say this. Um, I am super happy that, uh, that the world has kind of been opened up. And I mean the whole world. They're finally listening. And I think at this point now, we've made enough moves and uh, noise to be able to get the attention. Now we got to get to the solution process. And one of the things that I want to tackle, uh, no pun intended, but one of the things that I wanted to tackle is education. And it is proper representation through all curriculum and not just for African-Americans, but having uh, representation as far as African-American studies uh, amongst all schools. And I think if that happens, it changes the way we think. It changes the way we think about African-Americans. Because I think for so long in our educational system, we've been underrepresented. And so if you're upper, underrepresented and there's not enough knowledge base as far as our contribution, then of course, there's going to be the systemic racism that bleeds through all different areas in life. And so uh, I think that's one of the one things, in fact, just last night I was on the phone till late uh, with a director from UCLA and just trying to figure out how do we get for me, for LA County, um, and not only just LA County and LA USD, but other school districts um, that they don't have that in their curriculum because oftentimes what you see is in a lot of these black communities, they'll have African American studies, they'll have ethnic studies, but when you look in some of these other schools that are predominantly white, they don't have those educations. You'll get your Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Harriet Tubman. But I think if we don't change the educational system, it's going to continue. I agree. Uh, and Matt, you know, you've worked with Akbar. I'm sure you two yeah. have had conversations about this, the years of working together. How are you trying to better yourself as an ally with everything going on? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's listening. You know, this is something where it's, I, I think that statement of, I, I, I know I can't understand, I understand that, but I will stand and listen and be here and be one of the things where I'm, I'm just trying to be open and, and learn, learn as much as possible and hear the solutions and hear from uh, people I think who are regarded as leaders and, and just to try to be open to listening and, and then figure out how do we find these solutions. And I think education is a wonderful one. I think right now, you know, it's a place where we don't, it's, as a white man, don't always know what to do. And so it's a time to listen and learn and be open and support. And just to say, I'm here, I'm supporting and trying to figure out the best way for everyone to move forward. And, you know, it's been, it's, it's awesome to work with Akbar and to hear his insights. He's a, a very thoughtful, uh, well-read guy who just, I think is, he's always self, he's always improving. The, the guy... You were watching The Last Dance, Akbar, and you were always talking about yeah. you want greatness. And, and I think that's one of the things that, that uh, I, I have such respect for him. So I, I love hearing his point of view on this and, and you know, listening and trying to find the way that we can move forward in a, in a more enlightened way. I, I think be, this is a moment. And, and yes. in my lifetime, this is the biggest moment I can remember. And I think we'll be able to say we were there. We were there when real change uh, began. And so it's it just a part to say, don't always know the way forward, but we're moving forward.
Yeah, yeah. And, and, I'll, and I'll just add this too, and I'll just add this. And, and the one fear I have is that momentum will be lost, that the noise will be so loud, and then everyone will just kind of slowly retreat. It's almost like a funeral when you know you lose someone close to you, and people say, it's like, "Hey, I'm here for you. My condolences. My condolences." And then after a while, everybody just kind of retreats and goes back to to normal. And and again, I want to keep knocking at the door of education that. African Americans' contribution to society, especially to American history, um, and, and around the world, is is taught throughout. Because again, if we are seen in a different light, um, and we're taught about our history, and, and again, not just African Americans, but I'm talking about ethnic studies, that we understand that it can't just be a Eurocentric focused um, academic curriculum. That if it is diverse, that I think the the next cop that is coming up is going to see an African-American not as a threat, but as a, contrib as a contributor. And last thing, what are you telling your kids about this time and what kind of conversations are you having or having with your kids? Well, you know, you know, unfortunately, you know, I've had to have this conversation earlier uh, with my kids. In fact, we just moved into a new neighborhood, predominantly white neighborhood, very first day we moved in and we, my kids were racially profiled and I never had to have that conversation with them before. And the lady chased them all the way to the house. She said, hey, I just wanted to make sure that this neighborhood stays safe. And my daughter, she looked at her, she goes, but I'm 10. <laughs> she goes, I'm 10 years old. Like, how am I a threat? It was her, my, my daughter, my young daughter, my son, and uh, my niece. And they were just walking, looking in the new neighborhood. And that was the first time that I ever had to talk to them about racial, because I said, how do I, how do I explain this? Um, and they are still trying to wrap their heads around. And so I fast forward to now having the conversation and say, hey, what happened when we moved in on day one? That's what happens kind of really on a larger scale across America. And so, um, you know, my kids, they, they, uh, they, they have a better understanding today than they did even just when we moved in uh, into the new, new neighborhood. So great to hear from them and get their perspective. We'll have more from Akbar and Matt on Friday. They're going to talk about the season finale of American Ninja Warrior Jr. Be sure to tune in for that. Daniel Radcliffe is vocalizing his support for trans women after Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling was heavily criticized for making transphobic statements on Twitter over the weekend. In a short essay for The Trevor Project published on Monday, Radcliffe stated clearly, quote, transgender women are women, adding, any statement to the contrary erases the identity and dignity of transgender people and goes against all advice given by professional healthcare associations who have far more expertise on this subject matter than either Joe or I. Radcliffe went on to encourage fans of Harry Potter not to let Rowling's comments ruin the series for them. He wrote, quote, to all the people who now feel that their experience of the books has been tarnished or diminished, I'm deeply sorry for the pain that these comments have caused you. I really hope that you don't entirely lose what was valuable in these stories to you. On Saturday, Rowling sent out several tweets that seemed to ignore the distinction between sex and gender, retweeting an article titled, Opinion, Creating a More Equal Post-COVID-19 World for People Who Menstruate. Rowling wrote, people who menstruate, I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. Wumben, wimpund, wumud. That was her tweet. After her followers were quick to express their criticism, Rowling sent out a few more tweets in her own defense. Like this one, where she writes, I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth. The author said the idea that she didn't support trans women was nonsense. This isn't the first time Rowling has come under fire for comments about the trans community. In December, she found herself receiving similar backlash after expressing her support for Maya Forstater, a British researcher who was fired from the Center for Global Development for anti-transgender sentiments. All right, stay with us. Veterinarians Aaron and Ben Schroeder from the Nat Geo Wild series Heartland Docs, DVM, will join us. Plus, we will have more from Joel McHale, including all about his new film, Becky. In this week's first ever Pride issue of People, Anderson Cooper is opening up about life as a father. Cooper welcomed baby Wyatt Morgan back in April, and while giving us an exclusive tour of the baby's nursery, the new dad explains a few of the personal touches he added in that room. Watch this. We wanted everything in the nursery to really be personal, to kind of have personal history. Um, so uh, the, all my stuffed animals from when I was a kid, I, I've been saving them for when I had a, a child, if I had a child. Um, so this is my Snoopy, and I loved him so much I used to hold him by the neck all the time. So his neck is all kind of loose, which I apologize, Snoopy. I um, mean, he's actually wearing a t-shirt that belonged to my brother. And I remember at the time I was worried that Snoopy was cold. So I asked my brother for a t-shirt and I cut it. Um, I should probably wash this. And this is. 
this is Cuddles, uh, who was kind of my best friend when I was very little. I used to talk to him all the time. Um, and this was Benjamin's, his Kermit. He's stood the test of time and he came all the way from France and so he's here to watch after Wyatt too. So the gang's all here and it makes me very happy. This is a picture by, my mom did this drawing. It was one of the last drawings that uh, she actually did before she died. Uh, and I really liked it and she gave it to me. Um, it's, uh, it's a man on a boat with a flower in his hand uh, heading toward a woman who's waiting for him on the shore and she's got a, the same kind of a rose in her hand and it says, nothing can ever separate our love. So the nursery's pretty small, so uh, there's the crib and then there's the changing area. This also is a machine which I didn't even know existed until I had a baby and now I think it's the greatest thing ever. You just step on it and it, uh, put the dirty diapers in there and the smell doesn't come out. It's really quite clever. I love it why it squeaks sometimes when he sleeps and then he opens his eyes and then he'll quickly fall back asleep. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. Baby Wyatt is so adorable, you can watch the full nursery tour on People TV. And for even more Anderson Cooper, make sure to tune back into People Now on Wednesday and pick up this week's Pride issue of People on Newsstands Friday. Okay. That's a lot of blood flow to the wrong area. <laughs> Rob Gronkowski and Venus Williams are giving us our at-home sports fix every week on Game On, and we are loving it. It is a really fun show. So on the show, two teams, captained by the sports legends, compete against each other, and the losing team has to face the punishment in a segment called Take the Owl. It's a lot of fun to watch, and Rob told us who he thinks is the most fun person on the show. Take a look. My teammate, Bobby Lee, uh, let me tell you, this guy is unknown. Uh, that's the perfect description. You just don't know what he's going to do next. You don't know what he's going to say next. Uh, <laughs> you agree with that, Venus? It was, he's crazy. Yes, he's crazy. <laughs> and that's what I loved about him. That's why I loved having him on my teammate. I love to have that unknown factor. And that's kind of what, what Game On is. You just don't know what is going to be next. You don't know what the next trivia question is going to be. You don't know what the next uh, competition uh, is going to be. You don't know what the next take the L is going to be, uh, mm -hmm. what you got to do after you take the L. So I'm telling you, it's super unknown, but every time it's unknown, it just blows your mind. Yeah, I love it. What about you, Venus? Do you have a favorite person to team up with and someone that you loved playing against? Yeah, I have to say I loved playing against Rob because I got to win sometimes. And when I lost, I couldn't figure out how that happened. I was like, really? <laughs> and I had to be replaying it in my mind. Like, OK, what could what I went wrong? Yeah. Here? I, I swear to God. And I was like, if I would have just answered that one question or I had just said pass sooner, or if I just couldn't have been so afraid to climb up that mass and would have stopped, just stopped screaming, you know? <laughs> so like, there was all this. I love playing against him, obviously. I, I love being Carmel. And I loved having Demi Lovato on. And even though she wasn't on my team, Ronda Rousey also was like amazing. I love her. Keegan Michael Key is the host. He's so hilarious. I'll never forget that this last New Year's Eve, I went to a small karaoke party with him and it was a total highlight. Were there any karaoke parties? That's kind of my dream that's happening. Or what, what would you guys do when you had some downtime? I was no fun because I was training. So. I would crash after the show, You're I gotta out, be gone. honest. Yeah. Yeah, I was in preseason training for the year. So next time though, I know that I've got to like let loose a little more. So was there like secret parties, Rob, that uh, I didn't know about? Well, there, there there was this crazy party, Venus. You missed out on it. We were, <laughs> we were gonna invite you, but we knew you were in training for the preseason. And it took place like right outside of the studio and in, in, in the side of the other studio. And let me tell you, oh, this party was crazy. I was off the charts. 
My shirt was off. I was busting every dance move possible. Venus. Juggling. I, was, I can't tell if this is like uh, real or a joke. You can never tell Rob like what the hell. It was <laughs> it's crazy. real. Uh, yeah. We didn't want to invite you though. We did not want to ruin your uh, training sessions that was going on. Because of the pandemic, we don't know when we'll have tennis again. I mean, how are you feeling about all of that? What do you miss the most? What do I, winning. I love winning. <laughs> I mean, it's addictive. Um, I did love winning on Game On. I knew that was coming. Mm. Um, just, you know, I'm just saying. And my favorite thing on the show was Monster Trucks. That was wild. So I will not be able to come back driving a monster truck, but I can bring that attitude to tennis. And that's what I'm looking forward to most of all. All right, Rob Gronkowski has been a busy guy lately. In addition to Game On, he's getting ready to return to the NFL. He also went and won the WWE 24-7 Championship belt. That was at WrestleMania 36. So days before he lost that belt to R-Truth, we talked to him about what it was like becoming the longest reigning WWE 24-7 champion and how he was defending the title. You know, I've been defending it for quite a while. Uh, the, the people that I've been around have been coming at me. They've been all taking their shot. Uh, I've rejected them all. I actually took the belt and smashed it over my roommate's back already. Uh, Mr. <laughs> name, uh, took it right over him. He wasn't too thrilled with it, but he, he understood. He came at me first trying to take it away from me. But I am the longest uh, tenured uh, WWE 24-7 belt champion of the world ever. But you know something, I'm, I'm ready to give it up. I'm a nice guy, I'm a team player. I've, I've already broke the record, so it's time for myself to give it up. I will defend it still if people come at me, but if I lose, that's cool with me. I broke the record, it's time for someone else to have a chance now. I feel like you're humble about it, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm super I humble it. about it, of course. All right. Uh, last thing here, Venus, you and your sister Serena recently participated in an online Mario tennis tournament. Sadly, neither of you won. Uh, but however, have you guys played against each other? Who who kind of comes out on top with these online Mario tennis tournaments? I'd like to tell you it was a bloodbath. And there were eight teams and two teams with the name Williams on it. And I thought between that, I thought one of us would win. And it was amazing because it was a million dollars to charity. So... I just thought for sure one of us would win, and I don't think I want a game. And I think that tennis skills, <laughs> they don't transfer over to video games. <laughs> but, you know, it was all for a wonderful cause, and people were able to support their charities, especially during this time. So I was happy to be a part of it, and I'm, next time I'm coming ready. Like, I got a fun fact for Venus is that I learned the game of tennis about all the point scoring, everything. Um, all from the game Mario Tennis when I was growing up. There wow. you go. Now you know. Game On airs Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on CBS, so check it out. Veronica's pathway to Clinic Goat basically started with an exam. Veronica, you want a bath? Immediately when I saw Veronica, I, I fell in love. I'm not sure how Ben's going to react to this. She better be very cute when she meets him. So first up is gonna be her bath. Did find some lice on her. So after we get her bathed and dry, I think we should treat her for lice and make her a nice, healthy little goat. In the Nat Geo Wild series, Heartland Docs DVM, husband and wife duo, doctors Aaron and Ben Schrader, capture viewers and animal lovers' hearts. This season, they continue to dedicate their time to helping animals, large and small, at their clinic, Cedar County Veterinary Services. And they're even helping their community they are here. Guys, it's good to see you. And look at that little kitty. Who do we have? <laughs> Thank you. Well, same to see, nice to see you. This is Mookie. And oh. um, <laughs> Char Charlie turned 17 this weekend. And um, this little guy came in and needed a home. So before we get into everything, tell me how you guys have been doing during this stay at home situation and all that's going on. I tell you what, it's been a little bit difficult here at the clinic. We've had uh, uh, curbside pickup, you know, curbside appointments. Um, and when it's cold or hot in Nebraska or really windy, that's really tough to go outside and, and do these appointments. But we're finally able to open up our lobby a little bit and be a little bit closer together to our, uh, to our clients and patients. And Aaron and I are big huggers. And so because of COVID and we couldn't touch, you know, right. or, or be near anybody, 
it's it's that I think for us was the toughest part. Let's talk about this this season. Uh, diving a bit deeper into the kind of the family dynamics. Tell us how that all plays out. If you had any reservations and and why the shift. Well, I sure did. Um, you know, I think all mamas we're all mama bears inside. Um, and so I was really really nervous about having our kids' lives. Um, you know, on national television as much as they're going to be, but. You know, we had we had big family talks. It's a great way to open up dialogue when we say, "Hey, <laughs> let's sit down and talk about all this stuff." Right. And um, they're on board, and um, we we really get to know us better. Or we really get to share what our lives are, sort of behind the scenes, so to speak, and, and outside the clinic. And, yeah. and we take a bunch of field trips. Well, Ben, talk to me about uh, working with your two teenage sons, Charlie and Chase. Are they are they going to follow in the family business here, or what's the plan? I don't know. I, I, mean, <laughs> I did. I, I, I'm a second generation veterinarian, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But I want our boys to uh, really, really uh, get to see what we do, you know. And I, we bring them with us on all the calls we do, and and they help us at the clinic all the time, just like I did. And my brothers, uh, they decided to go other other paths and they love what they do, but I, I love that I followed my dad's footsteps. Yeah, that's really great. And, and Aaron, you both were also recognized uh, and received the Nebraska State Historic Preservation Award. I think I got that right. Tell me what that yeah. meant. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Took me a while to say that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was a huge honor um, that was bestowed upon us. We have renovated some historic buildings in our downtown, and um, that work was recognized. And, and certainly, um, you know, what we hope to gain out of that is to show people that, you know, anybody can do it. There, there's a, a, a little something that everyone can do to keep, you know, your main street alive and your history alive, and, and, uh, and those things are important. Yeah, and talk to me about, um, I guess, when it comes down to the animals, all right? We love to tune in, see the animals. Our hearts are warmed by them. There's also kind of exciting moments that viewers get to dive into. What stands out to you as maybe one of the best moments or most exciting moments with animals you guys have this season? I think the emergencies we go on out in the country, uh, they get my heart beaten, and, and they're yeah. pretty uh, exciting and exhilarating to be part of. Um, you know, and w when the when the camera turns to me and, and we're on our way and my heart's beating, you know, I'm just letting her fly. And, and you know, it's, it's pretty cool what 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 I say uh, on the way to farm calls. Um, sometimes there's some four letter words and, you know, I, I'm just getting ready for, for something, the heat of the battle, you know, to come up. And to me, that's the most exciting part of the show is when when the camera's in the truck with me and we're flying to an emergency call. I'm giving the editor some work to do and bleeping out that yeah, language. We're we're keeping several of them like full-time full -time employment. <laughs> Aaron, what are some of the more challenging cases that you guys worked on? You know, I, I kind of joke that I'm like, well, there's a sad case or there's something, you know, that's, that's an older pet or something in every episode. And I'm like, you know, that's thanks to the beauty of editing and how they lay things out. But um, I think the emotional connection is is really challenging because that that is real. I mean, every day there is a case that tugs at your heartstrings in one way or another. And so, um, you know, to be able to share those and let people know that are going through those situations that you're not alone. Um, you know, we just had somebody um, send us a little note that said thank you for, you know, going over uh, a condition that the kitty had in the last episode called pylothorax and just making me feel better. I had put my kitty to sleep four years ago and, and I really got to appreciate and see that and hear that message and it finally made me feel better. And so that's something that's, Pretty special. And so I hear there's a new cast member, Veronica. Yes. This Charlie, season. You Tell us about Veronica. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Veronica's gotten a lot bigger, so you'll definitely see she's turned into a like a Wait, big goat now. Oh really? Um, yeah. Yeah. She's been that was there was a lot of clamoring and she was tipping things over because she's a little upset she's in a kennel. Um, Wait, Veronica's so, there right now in the room? Yeah, she's so coming. We're bring her. Oh my gosh, this is a big moment. I'm excited. <laughs> Veronica, um, can you say hi? Oh I'm my not goodness! Not anymore. It's a big girl, Look me. That big, big Veronica. Carry her in. Bigger horns. I'm a little bit afraid for my, my face I right know. now. We need yeah. some uh, tennis balls, on, tennis balls on her horns right now. But. Yeah. Well, tell me about Veronica. She's, why, a, little bit, why, she's why? a little bit hungry. We're gonna try to feed her some lettuce. 
Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is essentially how everything eats when I cook at my house. I, like, I feel oh, like man. in your in your world, you deal with so many animals. What's it take for an animal like Veronica to break through into sort of like pet territory? Um, <laughs> I think it was her nonstop crapping all over the floor. No, <laughs> okay, I, yeah. Was, okay, no. one you over one way or another. <laughs> yeah, she did. It was, no, she was so darn cute and, and she'd been handled a bunch. So she was very sweet and very personable and she really- And she truly needed a home yeah. and, and we, we had the home at that point to, to give her. And so we're in, we've got a goat now. That's so great. Wait, where does, where does Veronica stay normally? Um, well, she lives kind of all around the clinic. Um, okay. And then we do have um, some friends that have uh, some other pet goats that um, when we're gonna be gone, we let her go out and sort of live with uh, her goat friends because okay. we wanted her to, to not be, you know, sad and lonely here when we're <laughs> yeah not right yeah, well so. that is so great i'm so glad that veronica could join us uh and that she's like really chill actually well guys <laughs> we love talking to you we love hearing from you um uh, thank you so much for taking some time today well thank, thank you, you so much for having us and we appreciate it yeah and guys at home make sure to check out heartland docs dvm it's saturday nights on nat geo wild we gotta get you to a hospital no it's over but the Justice Society must live on. Someone with the strength and the heroism must carry the torch. I'll try. Not you. Definitely not you. DC's Stargirl airs Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on The CW, and we are loving it. Joel McHale plays Starman, the father of Stargirl, and despite getting killed in the first episode of the show, Joel told me how his character continues to be a part of the show and why he would jump at the chance of returning one day. Watch. I come back in some flashbacks, so um, yeah, and I think that I, I was really only there for a couple of guest stars, but I was very happy to be associated with it because I got to wear a neato uh, suit, the tight, like tights, uh, and I like tights. And uh, but the, I, I know the show. I, I love the show, and I love Jeff Johns, the creator. He's a comic book legend, genius, and he is the showrunner. I mean, he's there every day until four in the morning and uh we shot it and they barely made like i finished the edit the day that kind of the lockdown started and uh it is not just popcorn teeny bopper uh light fare it's got some real teeth to it uh so i'm just ha i mean i'm not a main character at all so i'm just a guest star but i would i'll go back in a new york minute if they if they need me if if my character comes back to life and says Give me my golden staff, I, it's mine. So uh, that's, yeah, it was a pleasure to make it. And I love, I mean, I love, we shot in Atlanta and I love Atlanta. Let's talk about this real quick. Like everybody else, I did watch Tiger King and oh, yeah. I watched your special that you did for Netflix. I mean, what was the most surprising thing you learned or experienced while doing that special and talking to all these crazy characters? Uh, I learned that uh, people hated me for uh, asking a uh, what I thought was a pretty simple question, which was, do you think Joe Exotic should be in jail? And uh, it was, well, people were just like, how dare you uh, ask that? And I was like, that doesn't seem like it's a real gotcha question. He's in jail. <laughs> and um, it's funny, I, after interviewing everybody and some of them did disliked him greatly. And like people like Saf thought, that people staff had a good experience and said he had a good experience and then and as soon as Saf said those things i was like do you think joe should be in jail he's like oh yeah absolutely and uh and that was someone who got along really well with him so uh that was surprising um and but that, oh, it was the, it wasn't surprising they all thought he should be in jail 19 felonies but um the other thing that i people were like how dare you ask that and then they were you, and then they all said i was making fun of them and i was like i don't really feel like i was making fun of them or, or they were like how dare you make fun of the person that i've been making fun of for the last two and a half months it, and, right i mean there's no winning in that situation i thought no. you handled it really well because it is insane the entire the entire series it, it's really well, thanks. It's it's a very compelling document. I mean, who would have thought between that and the last dance? I mean, we have we're in documentary heaven right now. Uh, but it's and everyone. I mean, it's yeah. It's a really compelling documentary. In the first two minutes of the guy, I mean, in Florida, they were like, we were at a place where they're selling poisonous snakes. And I was like, where's that? 
And then he goes, want to see a snow leopard? And then he opens his van and there's a snow leopard sweating, which yeah. can't be good for it. And then I was like, oh, I'm into this completely because this doesn't, this is just whoa, bonkers. I got to interview some of the cast too. So I, it was, it was cool watching you then interview, you interview them right after. Um, so it was interesting to me that when I asked what you learned from it, that your first response was some <laughs> criticism you got. Oh, well, I just didn't, I didn't expect, you know, like after it got released, I just didn't expect, my friend was like, you're trending on Twitter and they're p pissed that you asked them that question. I was like, that's the takeaway? Okay. Last time you were on People Now, we asked you the hardest part about parenting and you said it was being away from your kids because you're working so much. So yeah. now you're with your kids hardest a lot more. Yeah, my, the hardest part is avoiding them now. <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, what's the hard, no, believe me, this pandemic is awful and it has affected so many Americans and so many have died and it's awful. And the people that are, I can st that I can stay at home and shelter in place because I'm not an essential worker, despite what a lot of actors think they are. Um, it has been good to be around. I mean, it's been crazy that I, I haven't been around this, my family this much since ever. And, uh, and it's great. Uh, the only drawback is that, you know, the kids are like, can we have a bunch of people over? And I'm like, no, not yet maybe later soon so that's the only sort of drawback but the hardest i mean it's like again this i don't have this is my life is not like i'm not working i'm not working in a grocery store where they're having to restock the shelves for 12 hours while they're closed and or a emergency room doctor or a police officer who are really doing the lord's work so you know it's i i i'm just the, the only hard thing is like working out timing of the day and stuff like that and you know not having 12 beers there you go <laughs> see i know you're in wisconsin so all it is is cheese and beer but i know all about cheese and beer yeah uh joel thank you so much all right coming up tomorrow more from people's first ever pride issue including some famous faces opening up about their coming out stories Plus, journalist Adrian Bankert will join us to talk about our new book, Your Hidden Superpower, and why kindness is so important. All right, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, guys.